Oh, perfect. We're back. Yeah, you're in right now. Can you see? Yeah, I can see your screen. And you have my screen. Yep, I have your screen. The importance of photography. Okay, so I'm going to lose you guys. Uh, so yeah, so if you can keep me updated with questions, it'd be great. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to introduce you, and then I'll put, um, I'll verbally give you questions. Is that okay? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, we are back, everyone. Um, thank you again for an amazing morning of questions and really posting on the wall. Uh, those of you that are here, um, you know, even if you posted earlier, it'd be really great. A lot of you posted your website and social media handles as well. That's really important. Um, we can quickly then, you know, we all can interact and it really does help. And it does, it's been amazing really seeing all the different questions and just interacting. Also as well, post any, you know, questions or just topics that are important to you as well. But in the meantime, we have Aidan O'Neill, who we've been speaking about all day. No pressure, Aidan. Uh, we're really excited to have him here and then to have him back leading a series on photography and videography. I think you all know um, now from the, the two hours earlier that you know the, the photography and videography are quite important, but you can do everything with your phone. And Aidan's really here to show us you know, the different tools. Aiden is really a leader in the industry. He's worked with net porte he's done uh, with L. he's worked with so many brands. In addition, he's traveled the world, you know, documenting um, or being a documentary photographer and videographer as well, and is really familiar with the different landscapes that we're working in. He's also recently part of the She Trades Commonwealth Project where he worked with over, gosh, I think 40 businesses, um, helping them pivot uh, to digital and really advising them on how to, um, do photo shoots and he even showed all of us how and he'll show the same how you can even in your garden or your home in a corner how you actually do a fabulous um, um, photo shoot so i'm now going to be quiet i'm going to turn this over to you aiden and thank you so much and we're looking forward to a really great session well thank you can i just before you run away can i okay. just confirm can you see me or no is it only i can my see screen? your picture oh, it's a great picture <laughs> Okay, so let me just jump out. So, if you can, because it might help later on. Now you've reduced your face. No, I can't. Okay, I'll just, okay, I'll come back to that. <laughs> uh, so, hello, everybody. Um, and thank you for taking the time out to uh, spend an hour with us um, working through photographs. Um, yeah, I've been so lucky to have visited many of the countries that we're talking um, or working with today. So, um, yeah, this is exciting. Tara gave me a lovely intro. Um, I'm just going to show a very, very small section of my work so you have some sense of who's talking at you for the next, um, but however long it is. Um, yeah, as Tara said, I've worked uh, in fashion for years, still creating work in that field. Also very lucky to be making documentary work across the world as well. So like Tara said, being, being aware of different uh, landscapes with, with, with which we work, um, I think gives a good sense of how to pitch um, a, a course for us. So, um, so hopefully, um, yeah, so hopefully you'll get as much out of this as I'm hoping to get back from everybody else. So I'd like to run a, a webinar in quite an interactive way. Um, so as I'm going, if you have any questions at all, um, please put your hand up and ask, no matter how simple or silly you think they are, because you can guarantee if you're thinking that question, it's something that I've missed. And there's 10 to 15 people in the room thinking exactly the same. So please be the brave one and put your hand up. I'm so shy when it comes to doing that. So you'll be doing me, you're doing my work for me. So please put your hand up and, 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 and let us know. And I think I factored in enough time that at the end of this, we have a nice little window to expand out on any of the questions, as well as answering them as we as we go. <clears throat> because I know you're, <clears throat> pardon me, I know you're straight into um, a, a webinar with Britta straight after. So um, I'm going to try and keep it really tight and give us enough time at the end to answer questions. So uh, over the next coming weeks, we, we I've broken it into four different sections. So. Today, I'm not going to dwell on this slide too long because this is the area that we're going to dig straight into. But we're going to look at ways of 
the, the basic rules of photography essentially um these rules for, for this presentation today I've, i'm using mostly people because what i would like for you to do at the end of this course is out of today start trying to implement these rules so that when we come to the next stage of the process your brain is already starting to think like a photographer um, so if you have a phone handy just have it out um, have it to hand if you, you know, obviously if you're watching on a phone you can com come back to that and just log log the information but we'll um we, we're going to try and build this incrementally so we'll give you the 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 foundation today of, of, of image making then we will build up into the next session where we look at creating specific work um creating work and uh, ecom work so um ecom uploads uh, and we work through different lighting techniques um like lighting that suits different um different uh, products and and we'll try and build sets that we can build at home for like practically nothing uh, utilizing homemade uh, and um, homemade products and the sun basically so um, so as I said so moving on in in, in, in baby steps we we'll, from from that we'll we'll start to build up a um, an understanding of lifestyle of photography and and that will be again just building on from the, the skills that we've learned from today the ones we learned from putting together um, beautiful e-com stuff so making your product look so rich and expensive that people just want to eat it up and, and implementing both of those together into your lifestyle photography uh, and then from there we'll we'll work into looking at um post-production so making your images you know polishing once you've made this, these beautiful images it's all about polishing them up making them look really presentable and um just as shiny as possible and as nice for when you post them online i i've put this slide in because i the other three webinars are pretty much set in stone because they're basic rules of photography with these apps they're changing every single day um so the two that i will definitely be looking at uh, going forward are canva and snapseed so they're both free if you wanted to go ahead and download them in, in advance even you you you'll have a head start and you, you'll have all the questions to ask me um by the time we get there but with the others it's such a it's such a shifting landscape and some are becoming defunct so i'll write that course closer to the time and so it's, it's the most relevant but i can guarantee that snapseed and canva will definitely show up so so there too that you can start to look at even already um so usually when i start a, a a project about the importance of photography and why we should be all taking the best possible images i'll go through a whole slide of um, charts that are in my opinion quite boring and the great thing today is that ran have done such an amazing job at taking all that information and presenting it in such a, 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 a manageable and beautiful way so but this is just i, I put two slides in because i think it's really it, it does highlight uh, my end of things and how important uh, uh, imagery is so this slide is just it's the transition from our how we search on the internet so um, this is uh, the figures uh, from 2018 and projected up until 2022 but basically it's just showing that we're, we're taking a shift away from using browsers so in the past if people were coming and searching for your website and finding it online and you had their their undivided attention because they've they've come to see your site they, they've they typed in the, the manually typed in the information and they're looking at your work the fact that everyone's transitioning into apps now or, or have been for years but it's getting worse when you're on an app based platform you're competing all the time so whereas if people are coming to visit you it was very easy you had already kind of gained their attention now you you really have to up your photography skills or or else you know there's so, there's another brand just literally a swipe away um and the second slide that i think is so important is uh that that th this shows the percentage of internet users who use social media as a research tool so research brands um 
by by visiting uh, your your social media platforms, so your Facebooks or your your Instagrams. So that's tipping on like forty five percent of the world's population on on average is doing that. But if you look at to the left of this scale, um, Kenya, um, eighty four percent of people use um, social media as a uh, to research brands. So it's never, never been more important for, for you to have um, clear, concise, considered um, in, information once, once you land on, on your, your socials. Uh, so I've, I've included these two links. We'll share this PDF around once we're finished. But these two links will bring you into a breakdown of all that information. There's so much to, to, to sift through, but these, the, this, these two companies are really great at mining into each different country um and giving you all the information about demographic the, um, the amount of people that are visiting sites using sites the time they spend the sex of the people the the age groups the so it, they do a fantastic job and i think they work over 240 countries there thereabouts and it's really digestible content and you can search country specific so i'm not going to dig into it because we could be there for days but um but you'll have the link once we're finished and you can um, you can have a, a good route uh, route, route for them. So today we're going to look at creating images, and essentially, when you're creating an image as a company and you're putting content online, what you're doing is selling, and we sell through building up trust with our customer. So in turn it's the imagery that we're putting out that if you're not if you're not hitting that point where customers start to trust you um you're, you're kind of you're losing from the get-go so it doesn't matter if you're so this is our old office a section of our old office there was thousands of people there's three or four more sections just like this um or you're this woman on the right working uh turkana in in, in kenya actually uh, working from a small little studio where her husband is doing the socials, she's making the, the products. It's all about just building trust. Um, there's nothing else to it, really. It's, it's quite simple. And we, we'll build on, on those, the, the pillars of what, of, of how we get to that point where we get our customers to trust us. So it's cons consideration. Um, actually, I'll put the three of them up because they, they sit so perfectly together and that there's no hierarchical um, order in which any of these three pillars sit. But, uh, so you've got your consideration. This is, these are kind of the, the vague or fluffy questions that we ask ourselves, the who's, the what's and the why's. Um, so we, like, who are we as a company? Um, who is our customer? Um, so with um ran studios i know you'll be working through a lot of these things um but it, it, later on it will play into our visual uh, image making um so you've got your what you you the what's the, so you've got the who sorted you've got the what's the the what am i selling um let's say you're selling a bag we all know that you can charge a hundred dollars let's say for a, a bag that will do the same job that a 20 cent plastic bag will do. It will carry your stuff from point A to point B. So I ask you again, like, so what are you selling? It's not just a, a utility, a bag. You're selling an experience. And we will dig deeper into all of those things later on. And the, and the, the, the whys, uh, you know, why when you're making these images that we're gonna work through now, uh, um, why am I posting it? Why, um, why is it that, customer is engaging with certain stuff so these are kind of the big vague questions that i know ran will touch on uh, as, as well as as us later on uh, as, as we continue and and then we have consistency um consistency falls right into that like that idea of like think of think of the people you trust most in life um to the people that that show up consistently the people that, that put in the hours with you they're they're always there you you, you they're a reliable source um so 
Um, we'll work through later on again, we'll work through like color swatches, um, style guides, uh, house tones, all of, all of that, the, that good stuff. And then the execution, this is making images. Um, it's having the skills and the tools and the knowledge to, to actually make clean, beautiful images that, that work for your business. So as I said, there's no hierarchy to any of these things. They, they, it's almost like juggling. Um, you've got, you have to keep them all in the air or, or it's, it's like driving. Let's say it's like driving. So you have all of these things that you learn separately, your, your clutch, your brake, your exhaust, or your power, your steering. And you, you eventually add all these things together that before long, you're going to be doing these things intuitively. It's going to be so natural to you that uh, you won't even think about it. But we'll, we'll, break, we'll break it all down for you. Um, so this is the execution part we look at initially. So this is, we're going to demystify the, the process of photography. It's, photography is a very simple um, game. Uh, it's, a, it's I, I always say to people that it's like running, you know, running is very simple. It's like one step in front of another, but to get good at it, you just have to keep practicing. Um, so I have included this slide because there may be people in the room using digital cameras, digital SLRs. Um, if there are and you have specific questions about that, you can ask me either when we finish the talk at the end or I'll share my information at the end so you can reach out and just DM me. Um, but I've included this, this slide into, the, into what we're going to share around in the PDF because it's a really great um, cheat sheet. So if you have some uh, knowledge of how your digital camera works, having this printed out in your bag, um, it, it's invaluable. Like I've given this sheet to so many people and everyone has come back and said, oh, you helped me out of a pinch there. So, so it's there. We're, we're not going to focus too much on it today, but I think it's, it's a great thing that you can, you can keep handy. So this is where we, we really dig into making photographs today. This is the exciting part, in my opinion, anyway. So we all have these super powerful cameras, computers in our pocket, and we're probably not using them to their, their fullest ability. And that's, <clears throat> that's just because we're, we're lacking a few really, really simple steps to, to, to really getting the most out of this incredible, incredible tool. Um, so if you have a camera uh, or a phone, if you can have it out at this point, um, just, so, so, just so we get a sense of you know, you know, getting used to holding things, and I'll show you different techniques. So, um, so the first thing, I know you can't see me here, but what I'm holding up now is a little lens cloth or a piece of cotton or the first thing I can, I, have to say is if you take nothing away from today's talk uh, except this one thing and i hope you take away more than just the one thing but if there is only the one thing this um cleaning the lens of your camera your camera is going in and, or your phone is going in and out of your pocket your bag it's being knocked up against makeups um, the, the oils when we reach in and take it out of our pocket the oils on our fingers we're smudging up our lens constantly. So I see so many people with these kind of hazy images. I hope this is coming across in, in these two comparisons. Um, uh, these are exact same cameras, exact same lighting. Um, nothing has been manipulated at all. The only thing I've done is just given the camera a clean. So the image on the right-hand side is just the lens cloth being cleaned. Um, so, that like that simple trick of just making sure that you give your lens a, a little clean. And if you don't have a lens cloth, the bottom of your t-shirt, something that is not abrasive, just giving it a small little clean will, will um, it's, it's almost like doubling your resolution on your camera. It's like, it, it makes it more expensive immediately. So I'm going to try and see what this play. So you should be able to see the difference in quality between those two cameras. One on the left, to me, looks cheap. I'm going to go just play that once more. And the one on the right looks much more expensive. There's been no filters or this hasn't been manipulated any, in any way. It's a simple wipe.
So everything's much sharper, everything's cleaner, you get much more, uh, if you look at the painting here, the contrast in that painting is, is so richer. And so if you imagine you're putting your products up and you're taking these images through a, a, a hazed, like a fog almost, um, you know, you're, 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 you're not putting your product in, in its best possible, you know, pardon the pun, but best, best possible light. Um, so the next thing, uh, maybe I'm going to try and come out of this for a second and turn my camera on because I'd like to Can you see me now? Yes, go ahead. You can, oh, perfect, okay. So, um, yeah, so holding your camera, it, this might sound so, a bit like cleaning the lens, but quite a simple and silly thing to even reference, but there's a few things that can, can lead to kind of shaky images or to, to no, let's say, non-sharp images. Um, one is camera shake. So if we're holding our camera, we have it out in front of us, and most of us have a tendency just to hold out, I'm gonna go back a small bit more. Hold our cameras out in front of us, and we will often use the, the button on our screen. Most camera, uh, most phones will have the buttons on the side of the camera, depending on the make that you have, it will definitely, it will vary. I know for, I'm using an iPhone, so the, it's the volume down button takes a photograph for me. Um, so instead of us, when we take a photograph, touching our screen to, to, to actually make the, the, the lens open and close, because what we're doing here when we do this is we, I'm exaggerating this obviously, but we're pushing our camera away from us and we're making a movement within, between, the plane between ourselves and the, whatever we're photographing. So that lends to the possibility of, um, of camera shake. So I would always suggest <clears throat> that instead of us holding our arms out, that we, we took our arms in, a bit like, um, I always reference this as being like, like a T-Rex. So tucking our arms in so we have contact points against our body. Um, and then when we hold our camera, instead of holding it just one arm out, or single-handedly, we've got both our arms in, and if I'm taking a picture portrait, which is straight up and straight down, I'm holding my camera like this, and I've got a second hand tucked in, uh, and what I'm gonna do is press this button, instead of releasing this hand to do this action. So, so you're doubling up, if you're releasing that hand, you've got one less contact point to you and your body, uh, and then you, you're pushing the camera away from you. So tucking in, having a contact point, and then using this button or whatever the, but the relative button is to your camera. That will eliminate um, most camera shake that you're gonna get with, um, with, with um, smartphones, unless you're shooting in like really, really dark conditions. And if we're photographing products, we're not gonna be in th those conditions. But that would be the pose I would take. Doubling down on that, when I'm photographing, I'm always looking for something to lean against as well. So I'm looking for a door frame, a chair, a table, something just to give myself, an, just to slow myself down and give me myself that extra stability barrier. So, so that's how I would hold my phone if I'm taking a portrait. So quite simple, two hands on, and I got my thumb ready for your, for the, to take the picture itself. If I'm taking a landscape, Holding straight out like this. Again, my thumb is ready. It's right by my uh, shutter release. Again, that depends on your camera. But by holding your camera this way and just be giving a little tug, so I'm pulling away ever so slightly from, my, from the center point. So I've got a little bit of tension on, on, um, from point A to point B. So I'm pulling away. That, for some reason, gives you an extra level of stability. And th this is a particularly great uh, tip if you're, if you're shooting video. It'll, it'll sta stable your, um, stabilize your footage for you. i um, not entirely sure why it works, but it, trust me, it does. So hands out, tuck elbows in, 
and that's my pose. Um, really, really simple tips, but like I, I cannot tell you how much those little things will help you um, just up your photography game. The next thing, I, I'm, I don't have the room to step back uh, in here, but if you leave a little bit of a bend in your knees as you're photographing, like, trust me, you're going to look like a T-Rex. because You're going to look and feel silly the first few times you do it. It's, it passes, trust me. When you start to see your images getting better and better, um, using your knees, um, using elevation, getting up and down and looking for the best possible angles. Um, so first thing about using your knees is if you are shooting video, it gives you an extra little bit of bounce. So added with the tension this way, you also, you bring in an element of fluidity to your movement if you're shooting video. Whereas if you're dead straight, your knees locked, everything is, is really rigid. So if you, any kind of a shake, you're gonna to start to, like I'm exaggerating obviously, but you're gonna to start to see this shake in your camera. So that little bit of a bend in your knee helps with, with, with the stability, but it also, it helps getting you moving um getting up and down looking for angles um moving in and out um never use the the zoom the digital zoom on your camera use your your feet you know get those knees in like walk in walk back out look for angles all over the place um it sounds quite obvious but you see so many people just enter a situation they pick up their phone they take the the, the, the picture and it's you know they've given no consideration to the things that are outside of the frame and the things you, you want to highlight. So we're going to, I'm going to stop my camera, hopefully. I'm going to jump back out, hopefully, into our So are we back on our slides? Sorry, I was on mute. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Okay. So moving on from the holy to the, there's a few settings that are the generic across all brands of uh, phone. So the first thing I would suggest is turning your grids on in your, um, in your photo settings. Um, a lot of cameras will have them on automatically. Some of them you go through your camera settings and you'll find grid um like 99 percent of them would be called turn grid on so i would always just turn these on there's such a faint little line that you, after a time you won't even notice that they're there but they'll start to help you with um with the framing and and we'll we'll look in a few minutes at the rule of thirds um but this grid is going to help you <clears throat> immensely um when, when it comes to putting together a, a considered image. Um, and then the next thing is your, your high dynamic range or HDR. Again, this is the same across all brands of phones. So where you find it, <clears throat> pardon me, where you find it within your phone will differ slightly, but what you're looking for is the HDR, your high dynamic range. And basically what your High dynamic range is it. I'm going to just jump ahead a little bit and then come back. <clears throat> so, here is a really basic understanding of um, how we see and how we register information. So, in real life, we're able to see the highest of highlights and the darkest of shadows all at the same time because we're super, you know, our eye and our brain are you know, super intelligent. They work harmoniously. They're, they're amazing together. Cameras are, they're, they're stupid. You know, they're, they're essentially a box with a hole in it. That, that's all the camera is. Um, so when you've got your standard dynamic range turned on your camera, it can only register X amount of highlights and shadows at the same time. <clears throat> now that, that window, you can, you can decide you can decide what that window is and where it works for you by, by looking at your exposure and how you, you feed up and down. Um, but the, the, 
the range never changes. So, so by turning on your high dynamic range, you've turned from a small little window to a slightly bigger window where you, you start to get more highlights in, you start to bring back in more shadows. Um, because of this, your file sizes will be a little bit bigger uh, because essentially it's just storing more information. So you've got more information, as I said, those highlights. Here's a good example of the, the sky. So you've got this really bright sky and you've got a, a, the dark shadow, pardon me, behind the, the rocks. Uh, if you didn't have your high dynamic range turned on, you have to choose between getting that range in the highlights or you bring your range down and you look for the shadows. So by extending that, that with your HDR, <clears throat> you're, you're saving so much more information that you mightn't see automatically when you take the photograph. When we look at post-production tools later on and pulling back some of that information, it's sitting there for us ready to use at a later stage. And it's, it's so imperative for making one it will make your life easier but it will make your products look so much more expensive by the time you get to upload them. Uh, and then you've got your auto exposure and your auto focus like i said the cameras are pretty they're stupid you know we have to tell them what to do so most of your cameras will have some sort of a system with either a square or a circle where you, you'll touch your, your monitor where you want to focus. Uh, well, actually, I, I shouldn't dismiss. I've seen a lot of people not even um, understand that. So a lot of the time, um, when you hold up your camera to take a photograph, it's going to take a reading pretty much from the central point. So it's going to focus on whatever central. And it's going to take uh, an exposure reading. So it's, it's going to tell the, the camera this is a bright scene we need to expose with that that range that i was talking about to the high range to uh, to take in that information that's in the highlights but what you might want is that information that's in in the shadows <clears throat> but those shadows might be falling outside of that central point so by touching your screen um, anywhere at all you'll get some sort of reference that you've touched in a certain place that's when you'll start you'll start to bring in your your exposure points uh, and your focus points. So you can change those, but everyone, like, I'm sure everyone has seen this before. You, you've picked your point, you move your camera a little bit and it jumps straight back into the central reference. So it, it takes all the information again from the center point, just because you moved your camera a little bit. By holding down on, on the points that you selected, um, you're able to lock in that focus and you're able to lock in the exposure so um from that point then you're able to move your camera freely without worrying about uh, without, without worrying about it jumping back to that central point of uh, reference again and mostly as well once you hold down your finger on that point <clears throat> you should get something like a sundial or something to the right or to the left of whatever you're holding and from there, you can either up your exposure by sliding upwards, or you can down your exposure, make it darker by sliding it right down. And it just means that you're now starting to be in control of what picture you're making, as opposed to the phone doing it for you. Because like I said, they're, they're stupid. They're just a hole in a box. Um, so you need to, you know, to tell it um, what you, what you want and and the next phase of what we're going to look at is 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 figuring out what it is that you want um so actually here's just something to mention really quickly uh when you're shooting specifically if you're shooting video always just stick your 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 phone onto flight mode because there's nothing worse than having the best shot and you, you know you have it in the bag and i don't know your your mom rings to tell you she's she's worried about you or she's putting dinner on or something. And you've ruined, you've lost that beautiful shot that you've been working for hours to get. So yes, yeah, sticking flight mode on will save your, your bacon. Um, so composition. So this is a push on from that point where we're starting to, we're starting to decide what we want the image to look like. We're starting to make those decisions. We're not just entering a frame and we're, 
however we arrive, we just press the button, job done, we push on. Um, because you have to remember an image is, an image takes one sixtieth of a second to make. Um, so if you take one second and you divide that up into 60 different separate sections, that's the speed at which an image is taken. So a lot of people put a lot of importance on that one sixtieth of a second. But if you think about it logically, it's all the things you do before. It's the, it's the making sure you're, you're holding the camera properly. You've, you've found your angle by moving your knees up and down. You've, you've started to make your exposure correct. Um, you've told the camera what you want. Um, so people really get caught up on, on, on that, the pressing of the shutter. Um, and, and they often associate that with, with um, having better camera gear. Um, but it's just not true. If you, you know, if it's one sixtieth of a second, but you've spent 10 minutes setting up that image that you want, it's such a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of what's important. Um, so I, I want to just look really quickly through some of the, um, the kind of, the, let's call them golden rules of photography. Um, so the first one, you, you've probably all heard of it, the, the rule of thirds. So when you stick that grid filter on that I, I mentioned at the start, <clears throat> automatically your camera, your phone is going to set your frame up for you. So eventually you'll get to a point where you won't even need these, but having them on is, is so important for that early stage. Um, so it divides your, your image into nine different frames. You've got... Um, You've got four lines, two horizontal, two vertical, and you've got four intersecting points. So you've got these four intersecting points. Um, let me go back to this just for a second. So we look at images that we find pleasing, and, and this, this isn't a rule that we've introduced since the invention of photography only less than 200 years ago. This is this dates way back to the Renaissance period where we started to make work that is more engaging and more uh, complicated and draws the viewer in. So, so just looking at this, this is a really basic understanding of, of the rule of thirds. So on the bottom third, um, so on that bottom line, that's where our, our horizon sits. Uh, that's at its most simple. We, as people, we find this just super soothing, we're drawn in. We instinctively know if, it's, if an image is good or bad, a lot because of, of how it sits within these parameters. So again, the horizon is still sitting on one of those thirds. So it's on that top line, um, but because the image is broken into three and our attention then is being drawn into those intersectional points. So the church sits pretty much on that um, top intersection point. The fountain in the piazza sits within the, the bottom. So there's a, there's a balance. Um, <clears throat> we find these kind of things so soothing and pleasing that I, I, when you were looking with uh, Robbie and Agatha earlier, I'm sure that the, all of the images that you were drawn to, all the exciting things that, that kind of, draw you in without you necessarily understanding or knowing why they draw you in on a subconscious level. <clears throat> they are all because they're falling in with these few little rules. Um, and we'll, we'll eventually work through incorporating all of these rules into your product photography as well. So central framing is, <clears throat> this, is I, uh, this is a really good example for the rule of thirds. So if you have your subject, your person, product, bang on center in, in, in a busy setting like this, our attention tends to be drawn away in every single possible direction. Um, we're, we're, we're too busy. We're, we're already considering our eyes are heading off before we've had time to focus and really settle on an image. So especially in an, in an age where we're constantly scrolling, you, you want to draw people's eyes inwards. You want to give them something to work on. Um, 
because it, because it's that engagement that slows people down it, it's it stalls the scroll um so just by shifting this product this woman uh product whatever it is shifting to the left of the the frame your eye has this natural sweep <clears throat> where you're being drawn out of the frame you're taking in all the all that same information is there as was there with the previous image but it's just so confusing you're not being pulled in every direction and inclined to scroll past i guess um same here um a great way to use the rule of thirds is to is for hiding things for for blocking and masking so so again this guy i'm so distracted with everything that's going on to the left to the right to the bottom there's too much information for me to take i'm going to scroll straight past he also you also have like boxes and rubbish on the left hand side it's just there's too much going on so by shifting our focus by looking at things in a slightly different way one we're able to get rid of all that rubbish so we see a much cleaner professional uh much smarter um, person to us. <clears throat> but i have no less information about this company this person what he's trying to sell but my eyes aren't being pulled in every direction so in that, this is where knowing the rules and then being free to break them comes in in super helpful so so this image here the kid's eye sits with on that section point it mirrors the the key um the key opening on the bottom left so you've got that it's a very balanced image but if we take this and crop it a different way and we bring him central i think this becomes a much stronger image um because there's information in there that we don't need so so again it's all about deciding making these decisions on like what you want the world to see um you don't have to settle on the first thing that you you either photograph or the first thing that you see. So trusting your instinct is, is massively important. Um, and with product photography as well, actually, using a central composition can work really well for you. Um, but we, we, we'll cover that next week when we look at making the, the product images it's themselves. But the reason this central composition works is because there's a balance in there. Um, my eyes aren't being drawn out to the... Uh, out in every direction that is a very clear path for me so even if i am scrolling i've got a i've got um a reason to stop because i'm being drawn into this image and, and same same with this um so here's a couple of portraits neither great portraits but i just wanted to show the difference between you know knowing these rules in advance and just being able to park them away I made these images at Amazon headquarters. Again, not amazing images, but instinctively you'll start to make these images and you'll have them in the bag. And it doesn't matter if you, which one you decide on at a later date, maybe it's neither, but it's, it's, it's really great that you're starting to just make that connection, I guess. So the next thing to look at is, 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 is framing. So framing within, so obviously an image is taken within a frame. You have your rectangle or your square, it's a simple frame, but starting to frame within that frame gives an extra layer for people to peel back, to, to work through. Uh, and if they're working through something, they're slowing down and they're seeing things at a, a slower pace. So again, you're, you're slowing this, the scroll. Um, so those first two examples, very obvious. Um, there's, you know, there was very literally a frame within the frame. Taking a boring image like this, where your knees haven't been considered, you haven't looked for angles, you haven't, you've just shown up, taking your phone out, taking the picture. Again, just by using the exact same place, looking for angles, using a frame within a frame, um, it will really elevate your photography for you, like so quickly. Um, so some of them are really obvious, frames within frames, so the one on the left, really obvious. Uh, but you can start to frame using, you know, on the right hand side, this guy is framed by using a red barrier in the background and blue in the front. 
So I'm framing them, but I'm also giving the viewer a, a way into the photograph. Um, and then another way, which in lifestyle photography, you're gonna, <clears throat> you're gonna utilize this a lot, um, is shooting through something. And again, it's to give the viewer something to do. Um, so here's a series of portraits that I do for a, a newspaper here in Ireland. <clears throat> and often I go and it's, it's very dull or boring space uh, and I'm trying to hide something. So by shooting through, so using your foregrounds, um, um, trying to mask out the areas that I don't want to show and, 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 and highlight the person, the important thing, whether it's a person or a product. Um, it, it, it just it draw, it draws you in, as I said before. So here's an example of me doing this uh, and how it's just simple it is to do. So this is an image from a few weeks ago. Um, so to get the balance right for this image, I needed to show some of this cabin to give it context. The cabin in itself was quite boring. So what I did was took a bunch of grass and just held it in slightly in front of the frame. Um, so you can see there, there's no lights, no nothing. It's just all about understanding good framing. Um, uh, so and coming back to our rule of thirds here as well, it's, it's everything sits nicely balanced and it gives the viewer something to do. Um, so you have that shooting through, you have your, your third, your rule of thirds, it's all working together. Um, so the next thing to look at is, is leading lines. Um, again, once we come to shoot uh, fabrics and we're looking at products, this is where all this good stuff of leading lines comes in. So I'm not gonna to dwell too long on it, but they, they show up everywhere in like man-made uh, structures or in, in nature, they're always there. But again, it's, it's giving us something to draw us in. And once we, once we start to draw our, our customer in, we start to, um, we, we have them on, on the hook at that point, where we can then at that point start to, to sell them and, and, and make money. So I wanna go back to this uh, Amazon guy just once more, <clears throat> because within this one image, I think it, it covers a lot of the rules that we spoke about. So we have our, let's just say, it, we have our leading lines to start with. Um, and all of our leading lines are pointing towards the chest, even though they fall behind the person, they converge at, at the chest. So that's where our eye is going to. And that's how we're kind of leading with openness and trust. And we're trying to draw our, our customer in and be open with them. So you have that, that's one element of play. You have the image, the eye falls within that um, intersecting point. Um, you have all of all of the good stuff is working in this image whereas you saw the images previously there was something falling a little flat so so i know all of these things separately sound quite um grand and there's there's so much to think about but i promise you that over time these decisions and all of these little they'll be made in a micro of a second that you, you won't even notice that you're making them um, so one last thing I just want to touch upon is that if you're making work for um, for publishing on, say, on your socials, and you want to start to incorporate text, allowing a little bit of negative space is always a great thing because it means that you're not trying to cover your product with text, and they're both competing for your attention. And like we said earlier, if you if there's too much going on we have a tendency just to scroll past because we're not willing to put that work in. It's, it's, it's too busy for us. So when making work, um, incorporating negative space, if you have a designer in your company, if you're at that scale, they will love you for this. But you know, here on the right-hand side is, is just shooting through or blocking or masking. And that gives me that negative space that I'm, I'm allowed. And it doesn't matter what the context is, there's always room for that kind of, there's always room for that play and to allow for that space. So without bombarding you, because I know you've had a big day with Ran earlier and you have um, 
I think it's Britta next. Um, I'd, maybe with, we have 10 minutes to go there. We have a lot we can of questions. Open, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I came in bang on time, I think. So yeah, yes, 10 impressed. minutes for questions. Okay, hold on. Um, oh goodness, there's so many. Well, I know you're going to answer this. Uh, what camera products would you recommend? I know that you're going to be getting into this in the future. Do you want to address it now or? Um, there's a great saying in photography that the best camera in the world is the one in your hand. So if that's your phone, we will hopefully be, uh, let me just stick this on so I can, there we go. Um, yeah, um, the one in your hand, if, 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 I tell you, what I'll do is I'll share my Instagram and if that person wants to DM me, um, because there is no best, I can tell you what works for me. Um, I'm a Canon user. Um, I use a standard 50 mil lens 90% of the time. Um, it means that I don't get that joy of zooming. I have to do it all manually. I have to move my legs if I want to get closer. But, but I'll, sh I'll share my a DM at the end, so we can. I, that person, please reach out to me. I, I I'll talk about cameras all day. Please. <laughs> you may regret this. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, okay. Hi, Aiden. Uh, most times when I take pictures, even with lots of lights, it still comes out dark, uh, not as bright as I would want. Why? Ooh. Um, can that is is that person taking on a camera or on a phone? I don't know if that if. We can come, maybe if you can message in if that's on a phone or a camera. Oh, wait, wait, wait. If you know, hold on. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm getting familiar with this platform. I apologize. Oh, it doesn't say. How about we, can we do both? Yeah, well, yeah. Um, if it's camera, it's because either your aperture isn't wide enough. Um, phone, she's using the phone. It's a phone. Okay, that's strange. Um, that, because, oh, that is strange. Um, it shouldn't. Um, maybe if you go into your settings and just make sure that the AE, the auto exposure, um, that's definitely turned on. Um, I would, I would imagine that has to be because be, because your aperture is is fixed on on the phone, usually about two point eight, which is pretty big. Um, so your your camera is working with. ISO sensitivity, which we didn't get into, but it's because it's too complicated. So it's working with ISO sensitivity, and it's working with shutter speed. Um, and it will usually do a great job at marrying those two together to give you an, a, a good image. Um, I, would, I would probably imagine that your AE, your auto exposure, is knocked off. That's what I would, I would without seeing, that's what I'd have to guess. And I just want to share with everyone, because many people are talking about this. It's just a little cloth or t-shirt. Oh. Aiden was saying, yeah, you want to show? Yeah. Like anything, even if it's an old t-shirt, like 90% of the time, I just use my own t-shirt. It's, it's um, because they, they get filthy. Um, and it's just, it's just, there's nothing we can do about it. It's going to happen. Um, and I yeah, if, if you have one, it's great. If not... <laughs> And it does work the amount of times, even when um, uh, Afina was saying, or, sorry, uh, was saying, you know, basically it's dark. I found that I've even forgotten myself. I'm like, oh my God, that's right. I never cleaned my lens. Aiden said. <laughs> yeah, like it, it usually manifests itself in they look smoky or they look hazy. That's mm -hmm. usually, but, but yeah, it, it can lead to, to darkness as well because, it, because the light coming in isn't being registered on the sensor well enough so because it's been dispersed by your makeup and your greasy hands and it's all of that stuff so now the so practical great tips i mean you're going to get a very big head now you're living up to your <laughs> reputation <laughs> uh you rock there's comments oh here. wow I'll, yeah I'll there that. you go <laughs> so we have a couple more minutes um you know, a lot of the, you know, basically a lot of the things that people are mentioning here would be things you're going to be discussing uh, going forward. And if just like, uh, could you just repeat, because some people actually were messing up the time a little bit, which I understand. I even today was like, wait, what time is everything? 
Sure. What should they be working on for next next week's session? Okay, well, I would I've, I put down two things here. Um, I would love, and I know you're busy business people, but those things that we just spoke about today, when you're hanging out, taking a picture of your cat or your dog or your children, or just start to, you don't have to add anything extra into your day at the minute, but to start thinking about the rule of thirds, like just maybe just moving, shifting, using those, like I cannot tell you, using your knees will change everything for you. Um, just seeing things at a slower pace and not rushing to take the photograph. So I would say just implement that um, into your daily life, into your, because we're all taking photos all of the time, whether it's our dinner or just try and start to make them which using some of these rules um, and then for next week uh, for, or for the next class or session um, if, if people can just bring or have a product to hand um, it's not that we you know it would be great if we, in the real world we would be able to photograph the product and move it but it's about looking really um, and getting that understanding of how to see the best part because as I said the photograph itself is one sixtieth of a second. It's such a tiny, it's the least important part. Mm -hmm. So it, it's those other things, the preparation, the slowing, all of that, that good stuff uh, before you press the shutter. So, so if people could like maybe implement those few things um, and you won't get them all at once at the first time, or you might, it, it'll probably be luck, but you, it, it trust me it slowly comes to a point that you're not even you won't even be thinking about it you'll just be making these strong images and we'll build every week the, i've written this course that every week we build on top of what the week uh, came prior so even if it seems like we're looking at people today we're laying down the foundation to photographing products and uh, because because the rules photography is so simple the rules are exactly the same, no matter if you're photographing racing cars or little bits of jewelry, like the rules don't change. I know that I'm a much better photographer now since I've had your sessions and I know everyone here is really looking forward to um, next week's session as well. And then over the, the course of, of the different phases. And um, yeah, so I think, I'm worried about time. Britta's here, but I just wanted to really thank you, Aiden, again, for the amazing tips and everyone as well, all of your feedback, really all the questions. Also as well, as we're going along, if there's things that, you know, additional questions that you have regarding photography, um, you know, anything today posted in the chat, any issues that you keep facing, if you're in Britta's section and all of a sudden you go, wait a second here, you know what, I'm thinking about what Aiden just said. Put that question there um, or comments and I will make sure that we get it to him as well um, after the session. So I really appreciate everyone being so interactive because it makes it a lot more fun for us as well too. Yeah, so much. Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea because we're just speaking into the abyss. <laughs> so one day we'll get to see everyone in person again. Um, but thank you, Aiden, so much. And no, thank we look you. forward to your, it's next week, right? Next Tuesday. Next week, uh, yeah. To, to, well, I realize I'm it's next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, right? Yes. So yeah. next Tuesday.